make America great again. Definition of a true American, the only candidate in this election that can lead the country in the right direction. All right, that is uh, wow. Matt, Matt Damar, who is uh, his a catchy uh, beat. pseudonym is Political Panic. And uh, he was a guy, he joins us right here on KJ 10. Matt, hey, how you doing, man? Hi, Matt. What's up, Chip? How are you, my man? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> let me ask you a question right off the top. Can I, real quick, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Seriously, what's, Listen, what? I'm going to tell you what's wrong with me. Okay. Almost as bad as you when you sing, stupid little punk, I'm tragically hip. What was up with that? Oh, wow. That's a, so- that's a song that I wrote like 30 years ago. Wow. Uh, he Googled you. Yeah. Oh, did you Google yeah. that or did Mark uh, give that to you? We have a, we have a friend no, in common. I'm in the ah. music oh, I don't he's, know who I'm talking to. You're right on know? the interwebs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so let me, let me, let's, let's, let me just ask you a question. Do you really support Trump or is this just a cool marketing idea? No, you know what? It, here's the situation. I'll be honest with you. You know, I, and you have to understand where I'm coming from and maybe you'll see it from my point for me. Is that you know? I grew up in New York. No, I've always I've always been into real estate and developing. And as a young person growing up, you know, I'm 48 now. But I actually, when I first graduated college, I actually had a record deal, and I was on MCA Records. I was a rapper. But then I got into business and doing real estate development and all that stuff. And always seeing Trump out there as a young developer, I always said, you know what? This guy's successful. He's wealthy. This is what I aspire to be like. And he always did a lot of things in New York very big and he was famous and so as a young man i grew up always knowing who trump was now fast forward as an adult over the last you know 20 years hustling and working my butt off day and night you know it seems like i i get older and, and older and it gets hard and harder to make money in this country because you know a lot of things are going on people all the time on the news are saying it people they were always saying before that oh you know we're getting people jobs again. meanwhile i see tons of people still out of work I see that one of the businesses I was in for many years, the nightclub and restaurant business, I see a huge decline in that. All right, so let me, so, let me so, stop so, you there real quick. You and I have a similar background. I mean, you know, like in, in, in forms of entertainment uh, and interested in business. And, and, you know, the thing is, is that um, I get the initial lure of having a business person with business acumen uh, coming into traditional Washington. I grew up in D.C. Yep. and politicians, you know, for the most part were like, like you know, everybody thought of lawyers. You couldn't, they talk, they'd say, this, you know, lies out of both sides of their mouth. Um, but, I mean, you said this, we, were, we did a TV show recently together and you said, Chip, yep. why don't you just give him a chance? And I'm like, I, I, I'm, we've given him a chance and, and I mean, you've seen what's happened. I mean, it's, I mean, everything from Russia uh, to the, the Affordable Care Act. I mean, the, what what they're talking about right now, when you break it down and you watch poor Sean Spicer and Kellyanne Conway trying to talk themselves out of it. It's terrible. I mean, I, you know, I, I can get that, you you know, that Hillary Clinton and the Clintons come off as arrogant and that that elitist thing. I get it. And and the Democrats screwed up by acting elitist guilty, you know, to much of the, the South. But you know what I love about New Yorkers? You guys usually have a really good BS detector and it seems like it didn't work this time, at least with you. No, you know what? But if you look at New York, I mean, there's a lot of people that weren't for Trump. You know, New York, there, was a, there was a lot of people, like I live in Suffolk, there was a lot of people out there for Trump. But a lot of people in New York, you know, like you said, they might not have been for Trump. But having said that, listen, the bottom line is that a lot of people in the city of New York City, directly inside Manhattan, there's always action. You know, the real estate prices have kept going up. It's outside of the suburbs, the real estate prices have gone down. So it's it's a little different yeah. thing going on. So they don't really feel it as much as some of the other people around and feel it. We want to see a change in the country. We want to see we want to see business. Well, and, every, you know, for every, me picking Trump, it was strictly because I want to see business change. I also want to see him stir up D.C. the way he actually is because there's so many people that have been in career politics, which I'm totally against. And I just think that people should change it up and give other people opportunities. And I think that the reason why you look all over, and I don't know where you live, but where I live, you look over all these local villages and towns, they're all in trouble. They all are in deficit. Like the town I live in, Abneyville, is in $12 million deficit. Well, like, let's talk, but let, Matt, let's talk about Manhattan. People that are in business. But let's talk about Manhattan. You really think he cares about people from like 90 to 130th Street? How is he going to change their lives? This is like uh, from Harlem to, you know, Spanish Harlem, all the way up to Pelham Bay. How is he going to change those people's lives in, in New York City? You know, what, did, what, did, what did Obama do for them? I mean, you know, listen, the bottom line is they said that, you know, a, a lot of the black folks in New York said that, you know, they felt like he abandoned he abandoned the urban inner cities. That's what they felt like. But they felt like, but you feel like Trump is going to rescue them? I mean, the reason why there's a lot of income inequality in this country is because the rich is, work the system. I'm not saying Trump's going to rescue them either. I think I'm going to tell you what the biggest problem is. And let's go to what you're saying about Obamacare. 
Honestly, I don't think anyone, I think Obamacare had a lot of big problems, but I don't think anyone has the answer for it. I think that's why there's so much stuff going on, both sides. You know I what think I, that's why, I mean, the bottom line is that we need an answer because people like yourselves and myself, listen, I mean, before Obamacare, I had Aetna insurance. As soon as Obama, I had it for 20 years, because years ago I used to work at KTU in New York. I had a morning show, RuPaul, and I had insurance. I paid Cobra after that for years. I had yeah. great insurance, everything. All of a sudden, Obamacare comes, and they drop me. I'm an independent person. I have my own business. I had to go and pay $300 more a month, and I had that for a year. And then they dropped me. So that is when I, now I pay another 150 on top of that. You know what? So I, you know a, Seriously, a, though, Matt, you know, when I look at this, now I didn't campaign for Bernie Sanders, but I think now, once the dust is all cleared, I think that the people who wanted something out of Trump, uh, the, and that's why they went for, away from Clinton, uh, and, the, and the people who... Um, that, that no man's land. I think that Bernie Sanders' ideas would have resonated. Single payer, um, and, and, and let's get the top 3% of this country to kick back more into this country and help us fix. I mean, I, I agree with Trump 100% when he talked about why are we putting a, you know, trillion dollars into the Middle East when we, you know, we need the infrastructure here, Bill. But that, that ship sailed. And, and now we're, in order to pay for the things we're talking about, cutting Medicaid is just a horrible <sighs> thing. 74 million people need Medicaid. And you know, the, in Kasich and I forget the, I always forget this guy's name, the governor of Michigan. They both, who, again, who were Republicans and are Republicans. They're talking about 11 million people who t- get advantage from the opioid abuse, uh, 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 program yeah. addictions. They're going to lose that. It's going to disappear. And, and, and I just, you know, and I, I'm not going to say Republicans are, are, because, you know, the, the entrenched politicians on both sides. You know, are, are the ones that are the problem. You think Paul Ryan and, and Spence and those guys really care about Trump? Nope. You think when, when, he, when he leaves the room? Listen, I mean, on your aspect, I agree on that point. You know, I had, I had to think back, too, because when you say when the campaign was going on, some of those guys were against him. He, he stuck in, and I give him credit because he had everyone against him, and he kept going strong, and he, had, he actually won. And the situation, when I said to you on the TV the other day, I said, hey, give him a chance. I mean, listen. Fifty days, hundred days. Not giving a guy a chance. Give a guy some. Give him some well, time to I, get in there. He's First corrupt, all, though. He's yeah, so corrupt. I, think, I, I don't. Do, do me a favor. Can we play the uh, the rap song again? Can you can you sing along with it just a little bit for me here? Come on. <laughs> Make America strong again. Make America free again. Come on. I gotta hear the bird. So, I don't know where you're at. You know, it's funny when we were on the TV. I, I made a joke and I said, "I can't understand your accent," and you actually laughed. I love the New York accent and the time I spent there. I, Matt, I appreciate you coming on. I know you were stepping in the hornet's nest, and and I do appreciate it. And uh, stay in touch anytime, with me, all right? Man, I, I love to talk to you, and I love to put both sides out there. And anytime you want to talk about something, I'm definitely in. And listen, you know what? We can always agree to disagree. God okay. bless you both. God bless America. I'll send you uh, the stupid little punk song again, too, so you have I mean, it. Listen, okay. if, you, if you send me a goal when I hang it on my wall in my bedroom, I'll take a picture and send it back to you. Uh, get out of here, buddy. Thank you again, Matt DeMar. Uh, if, if we, we have as we just tweeted out. All his information, so you can listen to that. It's actually, it's a catchy tune. It really is, oh. except for the part, the Trump part. Uh, anyway, um, so.